Thank you, Ron. Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who are coming back, thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who are coming as a first time, uh, welcome. Um, I think I've been presenting it for a couple of times for Ron. Um, Ron, thank you for always having us back. Um, so my name is Bala. I'm a cloud solutions architect. Uh, I pretty much work a lot on the data and AI space, do a lot of digital transformation projects, uh, migrations, and a lot more. Um, and today, I'm going to give you a, a quick rundown on what's happening in our Azure machine learning world, uh, what we are trying to do, and how it is framing. And I'll show you a demo uh, of our platform, what it has, and uh, and uh, what 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 is going to help you you all. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the chat window. Uh, and then Ron, if you can monitor it, let me know. Um, OK. so. One of the things that we always look is like customer feedbacks. And when we start poking customers, we found out that a lot of customers are having challenges in adopting analytics, um, especially in that machine learning world. It's a brand new field. Uh, how do we do it? Uh, lack of ML ops or lack of even machine learning experts, um, lack of trust in AI. Some, sometimes these algorithms can do crazy things. Um, so that, that being said, uh, but any technology in the beginning, it's always like that. Um, this uh, diagram shows you how the analytics maturity is going towards. Um, every company, um, like it or not, they are looking at how to build um, their own IP or use uh, our cognitive services. So I'm not going to talk about the cognitive services in this time, uh, but I'm going to show you our platform that how you can build your own IP. Um, so let's look at some of the key trends, what's happening in the data science world. Um, so basically, some of the areas that data science can help is in automation, um, like using AI or uh, using text or images and things like that, or using recommendation engines. And then how can they collaborate and work as a team a bunch of data scientists, data engineers, and uh, business analysts, and uh, business users, uh, SMEs can come together and perform. And how can they have a unified environment to do all of these things? Now, our platform is going to be uh, split into three different categories of users. And I'll show you what, uh, what that is going to be. And then, of course, how can you do ML ops and, and build your own deployment strategy and expand the analytics capabilities as well inside the org. Um, like as you can see, even in our uh, PowerPoint, um, you can see the um, transcription happening as we speak. So that that's AI also. So here is our vision. So we are looking at more of a broader picture saying argument analytics, um, which is basically, uh, basically like the regular analytics, business insights, and machine learning coming together. Now, how does that look like? So it's just like, like this. So you have uh, data engineers who are data preparations, and then you have a data scientist, um, which you can have citizen data scientists and real data scientists. And then how can the um, uh, BI developer uh, and existing skill can convert into the new modern era of doing uh, citizen data science, right? Um, so what are some of the common usage patterns, if you look at it? Um, improve the existing processing, accelerate and produce better uh, better forecasting algorithms, more accuracy, and predict more accurate so that you can, uh, you can improve your processes or bottom line or profits, whatever that is. Provide real-time insights if you're in, depending on what field you are in. If it is like uh, financial, you can do like fraud detections and things like that. Retails usually recommendation engines and things like that. Um, so these are some of them. And here is some of uh, our customers who are using it. Um, but here is where our platform comes in place. So we are bringing kind of like this is our approach right now and futuristic. Um, we have the Azure Synapse Analytics data platform that is going to getting merged, uh, kind of like have a two-way communication between Azure Machine Learning. Um, now, this becomes very powerful because now you have the heavy-duty data platform and data engineering that you can scale. Um, plus, you have the machine learning where you can also scale your ML models, and, and you also have the variation 
for to do uh, anything related to machine learning. Uh, the next few slides, I'll just uh, go through. Uh, now here is here is what our uh, main uh, advantage of uh, using Azure ML is because uh, in our platform we have a unified interface. We are trying to bring it everything together. Um, inside that, what we are trying to do is we are trying to build um, capabilities to allow uh, customers to do ML in all skills um, and manage their full lifecycle management and also to produce responsible. ML models, we are pro providing tools and technologies, and also keeping it as open and interoperable. Uh, this is very key because under the covers, we don't manipulate many algorithms. We just use uh, open source algorithms, and you can take it and do whatever you want it to do. So what is the platform going to look like? Uh, so this is basically a picture of the platform. So I'm going to let me go back. Um, Ron, keep me in time wise. Uh, keep me honest. Can you guys see the screen? <clears throat> Can you all hear me? Can someone respond? Ron? Uh, yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's fine. I can, can I can see you down to the demo, the machine learning. Yep. Perfect. So this is our platform. Um, so when you create a resource, this is where you're going to land. Um, so you're going to see like these three different boxes, notebooks, automated ML, and designer. What that means is like these are three different personas. Um, notebooks is for very hardcore data science who wants to do hand coding like Jupyter Notebook and get dirty and say like, okay, I wanted to do my own algorithms and I know Python very well or R very well. I want to bring in open source library. You want to do, do, do deep learning, reinforcement learning, SkyKit algorithms, or light GBM, whichever you want to do. Um, this gives you very high flexibility, uh, but also comes with, this is also a time consuming process. But now we also have simplified this process using our SDK uh, to scale algorithms and to run it in a parallel fashion or manageability of the model and things like that. That's just one part of it. The next part is the automated ML. This is like the no code part of it. What that means is like um, you can go as far as you have a data set um, with what are the uh, features or the columns that you need to uh, provide. And then what do you want to predict? You can just come and create an experiment with uploading the data set and selecting what columns to uh, um, basically say like, hey, this is the column I wanted to predict and select the algorithm uh, style, like either a classification or a regression. We also have forecasting algorithms. And then just select the compute and uh, run. So as you can see, the entire thing end-to-end uh, -end can be managed in this platform here. But what automated ML does is like it takes it and it amplifies a lot of things. So it takes your data and runs through a series of model depending on what type you're selecting, either it's a classification or regression. And it actually runs through all of them, figures out a score, and actually provides you the best model that it behaved. Um, and it also tells you um, it, it ranks it accordingly for you as well. So the, it, this, this, this is like uh, shrinking data science from six months to a month. Uh, it's pretty much makes it extremely faster and quicker to build model um, from here. You can select this model and you can say deploy. Um, but we also provide you um, uh, so, uh, like um, if you want to deep dive and see like what features affects the model and things like that. We provide you a, a, a screen where you can come and do your analysis and see how which feature, uh, which columns actually impact the model as well. Um, now, this is just one part of it. Now we also have um, the next part of it, which is the low code environment. Low code environment is like the designer. So this is uh, more like um, looking at and saying like, okay, I wanted to do, um, um, I know some data science, uh, but I don't want it to do write code, but, but I wanted to do drag and drop and try to build some model and play around and see. This is the, uh, the other interface that we have. Uh, we used to have this called Azure ML Classic. We took that and gave a makeover and added it to the uh, one unified platform here itself. 
this allows you to take do data wrangling bring in the models um, do the, the training and test and then do all your uh, manipulation in here and then you can also um, create endpoints we call it rest endpoints and deploy it in an aks container you can do both uh, you can uh, deploy to a rest api through automated ml and you can also deploy um, through uh, uh, here as well in the designer and you can also deploy using jupyter notebooks um, most of the functionality are within this space uh, you can connect to like uh, data sources such as like uh, ADLS Gen 2, Azure SQL, and there are a few other sources that you can connect to to pull data, and you can automate it as well. And as you are building the model, um, you you can register the model and you can version the model, which is also uh, which is a unique feature that we have. We also actually uh, keep track of all the experiments and the runs, so you can go back and see like how each run happened what failed you can see a lot of them failed uh, you can go back and look at look up the logs and figure out what's going on um, we also have a, a concept called endpoint this is the rest api that i was talking to you about you can deploy it usually production deployments are through aks uh, for dev test you can use aci as well now compute our managed here is called what we call the had our computes uh, so we have a compute instance which is kind of used for running note, uh, the notebook part of it. Uh, if you are a single user and you want to work in your own space, uh, if you're using the designer and auto ML, we use what we call compute cluster. These are very uh, ad hoc and critical in nature. So you can specify, um, I want four nodes, but not necessarily all the four nodes will be consumed, but you can pick and choose, uh, the computer will decide how many it needs. Uh, it will ask you for a range. And you can pick from a few op, a few variations of a different type of computes available as well. So inference clusters will also be shown up here if you deploy to an AKS cluster. Attach compute is an extension of this. Here I've attached it to the Synapse integration. Like I was showing you like uh, the slide how the Synapse gets integrated. So what I can do is I can run it in this notebook here. And when I'm running it in Azure Machine Learning, it usually takes it and uses the Spark compute and Synapse work, uh, workspace to extend and give you more flexibility to run uh, large scale models um, in a parallel processing engine. So you, you have very seamless integration between these two as well. Um, on top of it, we are also bringing in our data labeling tool. Uh, this is more uh, incorporated into our, um, what we call the deep learning models. Um, because you have to label the data set. So we are providing you an uh, interface where uh, machine learning uh, assisted data labeling. So you can have a, uh, if you want to build your own IP based on uh, images and videos, uh, you can have like a few team members joining as a team and each get their own pie and then they can actually do the bounding boxes and then do a few of them. Uh, if you have like 1,000, do 300 of them and then the system will run through its own model and it will it will draw a few boxes and it will ask you to ver verify and validate. So it's kind of like um, how uh, AI and ML is going to uh, help human to um, in improve the productivity in terms of the data labeling. And then you can take this output and you're going to, we are providing USDK that you can build your own deep neural network model as well. Um, so that's basically a very high level of the platform is. Now, um, for, um, for for what I what I did is like I also did a lab for you guys, end-to-end -end lab, um, which um, Ron, you can actually share the slides, and if you are interested, do the lab and uh, let me know how you feel. Um, give us some feedback. Uh, so these this platform are being used by a couple of uh, customers. Uh, end of the day, like. Um, there are customers like ENY and Walgreens. Uh, they're already using our platform and they are running um, production level models. Um, Ron, how am I doing on time? I'm doing fine. Yeah, we've got, yeah, I mean, Raj is already, you know, another five, 10 minutes, I think we'll be fine. Okay, so I'll just spend a little bit of time on this particular slide. Um, if you're an IT user uh, or if you're new, um, 
this might help you. So the entire machine learning lifecycle process, the data science, um, is, is one thing is training, uh, but the other thing is like how the IT is going to maintain the model and the life cycle of the model and how do they uh, operationalize it. So we also have a very high GitHub uh, DevOps integration. Um, you can take the model, uh, create it as a Python scripts, and then automate it through uh, Azure DevOps. So, so you can follow the CI CD uh, process in it. So there is an, uh, two, two process that you usually do. One is the training process and one is the scoring process. Scoring can be a batch or real time uh, processing. Now, the models can be deployed in AKS containers because it creates a Docker container. Um, one of the advantages that we also have is like you can also deploy it in our edge devices. Um, so basically, this allows you to, if you're an IoT based or industrial IoT based customer, you can actually build your own custom anomaly detection models or uh, vision detection models and wrap it up as a container and deploy it to the uh, factory floor or an, uh, if you're an energy company in a drone or uh, something that is very light with lightweight. Um, we also provide monitoring capabilities. So you can actually manage and monitor the entire lifecycle management. So that's basically what our platform is all about. Um, so that's, hope that helps. I know we have only very less time. Um, so I also created a lab, uh, take a look at it end, uh, end to end. Um, the data is all open sourced. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please funnel that through um, to Ron. Um, any questions? Uh, yeah, I think there is a question. Let me, uh, let me pull this up here and look for it. Um, Aside from that, uh, Chris uh, is thinks it was totally awesome. Um, Min Cow, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, had a question with regard to: Are is there GPU or tensor or deep learning available? I'm not sure if I'm um, correctly. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we do have. Uh, deep learning models. So, for example, if you come in here, we have Tesla um, V100 processes. Processes. Uh, that's the newest one. Um, we also have K80, I believe. Um, so you have GPU as well. Uh, there might be um, some regions um, might not have all the variations, uh, but you do have GPU support here. 